sometimes when you look at a hyperdoc, it's not labeled with the pedagogy. It can look like a scavenger hunt or just something that you just give to kids and let them run through. I want to do a screencast of this particular hyperdoc to sort of explain my thinking and the instruction that went into this. It was very um, complex instruction, uh, took over a period of days, and it was so much more than maybe just the words that show up on this doc. So starting uh, with the shortened URL, uh, by the way, if you want to copy this resource as we go through, uh, just click on File and make a copy. And I'll point out things that need to be changed as we go. That goes for any HyperDoc. Um, as you do things, make sure that they are changed. And I'll make sure my name is on the bottom. I have to add that on there. Um, that you leave the person's name who originally created it and say, inspired by, and then you put your name, uh, remixed by. Uh, it's always a good idea. Now, I started with a shortened URL just for all of you to be able to get onto this um, HyperDoc. But you go ahead and take that off um, and put your own shortened URL. Otherwise, students will be coming to mine. And the mine is titled Good Ideas Project of Problem Solving HyperDoc um, Student Samples. That, that's a reminder to me that my student samples are on here. So when we started this, we started with the Engage piece. Oh, I should tell you too, this all has come from the um, basic HyperDoc lesson plan template that we have in our book. Our whole book is written around this template explaining what to put in each of these sections. Um, but this is the template. Um, I just made a copy of this template and started to alter it. You can sort of see how it looks the same. There's, I changed the images and just changed the coloring, and then I put my content into each section. So I wanted to start off with the engage piece. And I had come across this um, great video about hotels having um, beehives on their rooftops in San Francisco. And I posted the video here and we watched it as a class. And we did this piece as a whole class because I really wanted to um, teach kids how to watch video, how to um, pull out their um, critical thinking as they watch and get them inspired and curious. That was the most important goal. So I added in the reflection questions here for them to see, but also as a reminder to me um, as we go through this, this is kind of, you know, the outcomes I want after they see this video. I like to post the video here so kids can go back and watch it again as many times as they want. But the engage piece was definitely a whole class piece. During that same class lesson, uh, we did this, by the way, with seventh graders um, who were in a block period. So um, they had two class periods together. We had about 90 minutes. Um, each of these could be done. You can think about it in chunks of 45 minutes or however you want. I then shared with them the explore piece and it's a good ideas playlist and it's a playlist of videos about 40 videos that I've been collecting for quite a while and they're all good ideas or things that I've come across that I think are really amazing ideas um, that might get kids thinking about good ideas themselves. Um, I'm noticing the power of mentor text as they're um, uh, learning um, and I wanted them to explore. Now we um, decided um, the teacher in the classroom and I uh, decided with a partner um, they were going to watch the videos so that there would be that added collaboration and communication going on. That was important to us. Um, as they were going, uh, we wanted a place where they would post their thinking. Um, and so we posted uh, a space right here, included the word here, and linked it to a Padlet. And they posted their ideas here. Now, uh, I should say at this point, the teacher who created this with me is one of my former students who's now a first year teacher in the middle school in our town. So it's really fun to do this project together. Um, but as we were doing this, we kept going back to this piece. And this, um, while they were watching videos, we had this up on the big screen. Everyone knew we were looking at their comments. Everyone uh, was looking at each other's comments. We were doing our first formative assessment using the Padlet, trying to see to what level are the kids understanding the videos they're seeing, uh, are they getting the gist of um, the cleverness to the good ideas, and this became our in-class discussion piece to sort of synthesize with students. Uh, we stopped them after a period of time and said, all right, you can't watch videos anymore, and you they were very upset. They didn't want to discuss, um, and we really wanted to help them to elevate their thinking and their ability to express what is clever and what is not clever? And that was a question we kept asking. Um, 
you know, what's, what's clever? What did you see? How would you define clever? And I think that's a really um, great word that I've used throughout the school year um, to get kids thinking about the products they make, um, you know, when it comes to the apply section of a hyperdoc. I often ask for it to be clever. And they're like, what does that mean? Well, this is a great time to talk about that. We also talked about important ideas versus, um, you know, ideas that are really quick and easy that can be done, um, you know, and then versus really long-term ideas. Kids um, did a nice job with it. Uh, and then we got them talking to each other about the comments on here. So building in collaboration um, and that communication is really important in our hyperdocs. So I loved putting that piece in uh, right here in the explore section of this one. Um, this um, post, uh, this part, the first um, engage and explore took one day. Actually, when we came back together, uh, they wanted to go through the videos one more time. They asked for more time. So you could definitely take almost two days with just the good ideas playlist and the reflecting part. I say that because this next part, the explain, um, kind of gets to one of the main objectives of this whole hyperdoc, and that's you know, teaching, it's a, just an added layer, teaching kids about research and evaluating credibility with the websites that they're researching. So their, short, their um, task was to select an idea from the Padlet or a new one. What is the base topic? Post your topic here. Now we, I can see an error in what we did here. I said, what is your base? What is the base topic? Post your topic here. It, I didn't put in writing what I really meant about the base topic. Now, when you see this online, you're like, this is, this is not a great lesson. Well, you're right. I'm constantly revising and editing my own lesson after I taught it. Now, I said in class, I defined in class what the base topic was. We talked about it. We gave examples. I modeled it. But I didn't put it in writing here. So that is something that I might add. I don't want to add too much text to my explain pieces. But that might clarify some things. So I had them post... Um, what topic they were going to do some research on. And you'll see in my um, comments on the side why it was a mistake. Students were putting down what the um, solution was um, and not what the actual underlying problem is. So you can see I said to Evan and Sophia, this is a solution, but what is the underlying problem? What is it that they're um, trying to solve? Bicycle safety, is that the problem? So I did that for this comment here. Um, where they talked about solutions. Well, as you can see, oh, actually they revised it. So the kids went in and they changed their topics and they clicked resolve um, after they finished it. So that was pretty good. But I had, a, I had even more comments there. That was my first sign that something went wrong on the um, instructions. Um, although I say it in class, it's often um, the benefit of a hyperdoc is they can go back and review, what is it I'm supposed to do? Right in one location right next to the link where they post their thinking. Again, students use this piece to get an idea, see where everyone else was going. Um, there were repetitive topics, but I think they wanted to be different uh, and do different ones, so they were <clears throat> kind of going through and seeing what everyone else was doing. There were language learners in this classroom, and they were able to look at each other's um, and understand what was expected to be written under a research topic. Um, that was a big benefit, um, to have them all posting in one location. Um, this research the topic for background information, explain the issue, conflict, problem, use evidence to share solutions already created. This piece is so easily adapted for what you are trying to do with research. This is just what this class was doing at this moment, at this time. It was two weeks before the end of the school year. And so the decision was made that this is what we were going to do. Um, and what is not in this section, and this is why the whole reason I'm making this screencast, is it doesn't show the teaching. Now, in order to teach this part, it was a whole class lesson. Kids were not on their devices. I was on the device projecting onto the screen, and I walked them through how I research. I just went in and did a Google search and then talked about which um, link I click on from there, where do I start, how do I um, assess um, a site for credibility, how do I use different sites to learn keywords in order to um, then move on and uh, refine my um, search is what really happened because I was doing research on bees. I kept with my bee theme. 
um, and we ended up with the, at the EPA, and we kind of started discussing um, the information found on the EPA website. Um, it, was, it was a good process. The kids were really attentive. They were asking questions. It was a whole class lesson. Again, you are free to teach this however you want. I did think about screencasting that process so kids could go back and look at it again. But, you know, teacher's life, it was just we were really busy. We didn't get it done. Maybe next year we might add that in. I'd love to hear your thinking about that. How do you teach research? And what, how would you revise and edit this section of the HyperDoc? This is the explain section. Um, the teacher, she did, did go put in um, a note-taking um, graphic research, um, graphic organizer for them. She gave them directions, and she said that you can um, use this how you want, and kids used it differently. Some kids, this didn't work for them. They wanted to do it on a Google Doc. We were just trying to give them choices when it came to collecting notes for their research. Um, and then we did talk um, about how to use EasyBib. Uh, we had done that earlier in the year because bibliography and citing their sources was a very important part of this project. Uh, next came the creating part. So if you want to see, um, you know, in the original HyperDoc, it would be explore, explain, apply. And the apply piece was um, we wanted them to use Adobe Spark pages. So this is a link that takes them to Adobe Spark. And I had actually made a mentor sample. Um, it's an incomplete sample. Uh, and I did that on purpose because I wanted them to evaluate it. So I kind of went through this idea that I wanted all kids to learn about this topic. This is the issue, the underlying issue. Where have all the bees gone? And it's about how um, bees are dying off and how it has major implications. Um, and so uh, I love the Adobe Spark pages because what an amazing way to post your uh, research and your findings for others to explore. This is one of my big um, ahas I found about um, colony collapse disorder. Um, I was able to create images and upload them. I was able to post videos um, that were really effective. Um, and then adding in this piece, what can you do? Now, I stopped here because I only put this one issue. Um, but I did put in and modeled my bibliography and how that fit in here as well. Um, when I first saw Adobe Spark Pages, I thought this is such a great way to um, learn information in a different way for the explain portions of HyperDocs. And I thought, how cool would it be for kids to um, literally flow through a site like this and learn about what's happening to bees? But I thought even better is student-created content. So how do we get kids creating these kinds of dynamic pages, almost like the transmedia pages, where there's text, there's images, there's videos. Um, I can add um, students added interactive website links in here. Um, you could add collaboration in here. It, the, the uses of this um, tool is, um, was exactly what I was looking for. So we went through and we evaluated um, what was good, what was not good, um, where uh, it fell through because it wasn't complete. Um, and they started creating. And that's pretty much what it took to get them creating, was just kind of talking through that. Um, I did not teach them how to make Adobe Spark pages. They just played with them, and sure enough, these seventh graders were able to figure it out. Um, and we worked with them. Um, the teacher gave them in-class time for about, um, I would say, a, over the course of like four days, they worked on this. Um, they then were asked to share, and they had to turn it in here. Now, uh, this first one, uh, if you click on it, it says you need permission. Um, don't ask for permission to copy this. All you need to do uh, for this one is to put your own form here. Um, and so that's um, just a form that would say um, asking for their name and link to the project and the title of the project. Um, that would be helpful. Uh, I then created another form for kids to review them and uh, linked it up here. I wanted them to do this because I was trying to think of a way for them to give feedback to everybody without kids standing up one at a time presenting because I think about the time that that takes in class to have one presenter at a time and everyone is passively listening in the classroom. This way, um, I linked up everyone's project. Um, I could do it right on the form. Students were asked to select the project they were reviewing, and then um, it would move them on to doing these four questions. Thoughts about the topic? Do you have ideas and solutions for this topic? 
What would you do to help solve this issue? Who needs to see this information? Who should we share it with? And then feedback for the Spark design um, and how effective it was. Thoughts about this topic? I was just trying to get them to um, share new learnings, new ahas they had, curiosities they had. Um, and then I was trying to move them at this point to ideas and solutions um, and get them um, to see if they really do have new ideas for this now. Kids went in and um, were able to do this in partners, which was also very um, a, a good idea for this class uh, to talk through this and share ideas they had as they were going. Um, they could do this as many times as they want, and I gave them that instruction at the top. Um, another piece to this, um, another element for this reflection piece um, after they were sharing is here, and that is they were able to see all the reviews that they were submitting, and I felt like this was a very powerful thing for them. Um, here was the name of the project. I showed them how to sort so that they could um, sort them. Um, uh, they would be in some sort of order so they could see their own um, reviews here. Um, and the thoughts about their topic, um, uh, do you have ideas or solutions? They could see all the way across. Um, it was interesting for them to go back and be reading um, uh, you know, what they were getting, uh, what kind of feedback they were getting for their sections. Um, we did a lot at the end though. I think even more important was the in-class feedback. And this does not take any kind of technology. This was, I think, um, one of the most important parts of the whole hyperdoc. And it was um, putting away tech and sitting together and really debriefing this um, about ideas about who do we need to contact to make this project happen? Um, is the idea going to have a state, local, national, global effect? Which idea is important to you? Which would you pursue? pursue why? And then why do projects like this exist? That was quite a conversation piece. But this bottom reflection really hit me when we were going through this. Well, this may look like just a research project um, that I had the kids go through um, to explore um, student-created content and curiosity. I mean, it had a lot of layers to it, but the aha came down here in the reflect. I realized this was really the beginning of Genius Hour projects, or if you call them 20 time projects, or 20% time in the classroom. When I want kids to uh, pursue projects and make a difference and uh, do something meaningful, um, and I was generating, I, I would only go through and just generate ideas and brainstorm. I think this group, I wish it wasn't the end of the school year, uh, they really wanted to pursue some of these ideas. Um, I think um, this group was ready and primed to then jump into 20 time projects because they had this idea for what are good ideas and what are good solutions and how do we pursue those and how do we research to find out all the information before we jump into our 20 time projects. So um, I think um, this uh, hyperdoc can be adapted uh, for any kind of use, whether it be just a research project um, just something to um, give kids time to explore good ideas and to come up with their own good ideas. Um, I would love to see the variations you create with this. I hope that you will share them on Teachers Give Teachers. Um, our website is um, hyperdocs.co and we have um, Teachers Give Teachers on the site. We'd love to see you share here or on Twitter at TSGiveTS. That is the Good Ideas Project.